Good morning, good afternoon, good evening all over the world. Dobson 777A here. Well, here we go again. What's well, been happening this week? I thought I would do a little history lesson to tell you why I think we're going to just repeat what happened from 1970 to 1980. Now, things could happen much more rapidly than what this shows, but I think we ought to use this as a guide because history uh, doesn't necessarily repeat, but it tends to rhyme. So that's why I'm a big history buff. But if you look at what happened from 1970 to 1980, gold was at $35 starting around uh, this point right here. And then it went up 5.25 times to, uh, let's see, let's say about 190 or something. And then by the, and this was in uh, 1974. Then it went all the way up to nearly 700, ignoring this instantaneous spike up here, looking at more of this uh, uh, top of the candlestick rather than the flame itself. But anyway, $700, which would have been a 19 times increase. So, uh, so uh, gold went from 35 to nearly $700. And I'm going to propose that we're actually just sitting right here. So a lot of people, they're getting all excited and they're thinking, why the heck isn't things moving? You know, why are we just, you know, uh, not, not seeing the gains like everybody thinks? You got to remember, this takes time for it to build up. And even when it went up 5.25 times, it dropped to uh, nearly half. So it went up to nearly 200, dropped down to 100 before it got its next leg again. So I don't know if this is gonna follow exactly this way, but even here, there's some significant gyrations, even in physical gold, and imagine what the miners do along this way. But you gotta hold on and you watch, you're gonna get rewarded. So I want you to realize this. So what does it look like uh, over the next couple years in real dollars, um, you know, based on today? So I went and put together a chart, and somebody was on one of the other channels today, and they're saying that, uh, Gold's going to go up anywhere from eight thousand or to eight thousand to nine thousand dollars over the next couple of years. Well, using you know this chart, I'm arguing it's only going to go up five point two five times because his argument was saying it was going to go up six point seven to seven point five. Now this is really noise between these three, but I'm just going to use this as the example. This is our current chart from uh, roughly September 2018, and you can see this little bitty change that's occurred here and how we could just, and it is obviously not going to be a straight line, it's going to be doing this uh, undulations all the way up. But, uh, you know, 5.25 is uh, roughly $6,300 uh, using from 1970 to 1980. And then you would be up to $8,000 for this one and $9,000 for that one. So that gives you a rough idea of what it's going to look like. And we're just in the next two to three years Again, we're looking at, you know, right here, this two to three year period, uh, what and three years period, uh, you know, worst case, this is what it would look like. So just trying to give you an idea, I want you to be able to visualize things and understand how fast this thing can change. And we'll continue to use our pitchfork chart and see how things are operating. In fact, let's look at the pitchfork chart. All right, when I look at my pitchfork chart, uh, we definitely have fallen behind the 50-week moving average. We're actually below it. And it uh, normally, when we've seen this uh, approach, this, excuse me, 50-week moving average, we'll see it bounce up, but it's actually uh, struggling to get back up above this. I started looking at uh, previously when we've fallen below the 50-week moving average. You can see it's for a fairly short duration and then comes back up each time. It it's, uh, kind of runs right on this 50-week moving average. So I started looking at uh, the shorter term chart to see what it looks like. And previously, uh, people were calling a death cross back here at this point, but they weren't looking at uh, like the daily close. They were looking at the intraday. Well, we actually did have a crossing here, and now we're, uh, we've, we've uh, gotten into a death cross, they call it, where the uh, 50 day crosses the 200 day. So when I look back in the past history to see, you know, dramatically what that means. Uh, so here's, uh, here's what they would call a death cross. And you can see there was a pretty substantial uh, drop at this point. And then you come back up and hit this and then, you know, it, it's kind of recovering at this phase. We go back and look over here for another one. 
So here's where another death cross was, and we had a drop, and then it come back up. I don't know how far I can go back here. Got to look for the orange cross in the blue. So this is going all the way back to uh, right here. This is 2014. So there's been several examples. I don't know myself. It looks like we're still in this uh, upward trend. So I'm not expecting anything substantial. I think what we're doing is we're getting fooled by the stimulus from the government, which uh, is going to have only short-term effects, and then it's going to uh, cause significant problems for for everyone as we see inflation and everything else. So we got to watch interest rates. We got to watch the printing that they're doing. They're monetizing the debt, and then we'll see you know how this works. But right now. You know, the stock market's continuing to increase because they got like a Christmas in January for the last stimulus, and we're probably going to see one in March. So we'll see how that uh, weighs in on uh, precious metals. I thought I would share with you my recipe for gluten-free banana bread. I know occasionally if you like bananas like I do, I buy too many, and all of a sudden I got a bunch of overripe ones, and it's time to do something with them rather than just uh, throwing them out when they get too mushy. <clears throat> so anyways, a banana bread is a simple way to do it. And uh, I've been working on this particular recipe for several months and it has been very consistent in, uh, in the production of the bread. So I've been very happy with it. But there's a couple twists that I've done and I will put the ingredients in the recipe actually in the description. But I'm going to just give you an overview of this and show you, you know, kind of like step by step what I've done here. <clears throat> so the way this thing starts out is you have uh, two beaten eggs. Um, eggs that I have uh, from my chickens out back. I have uh, some brown sugar and instead of butter, because I don't have a gallbladder, I found I just can't tolerate butter at all anymore. I use coconut oil and then I have some butter powder that I got from Firehouse Flavorings. And uh, I've been using this in all my recipes and it tastes just like butter, it's fantastic. Then you need uh, two and a third cups of uh, bananas uh, mashed. And you just use like a potato masher. Um, it's probably about five to six smaller bananas, not the real large ones. Then you got a couple cups of gluten-free flour, and I've, I've got a number of them listed here, or shown here. So you got uh, Cruces, uh, King Arthur, Red Mill, and Pillsbury. I've been using this Cruces. It seems to work really well. And within the flour, you put a little bit of baking soda and salt, and I'll show you the actual, you know, how many teaspoons and all that kind of stuff you do in, in the um, description. But... I tell you, I've, been, I've done very well with this uh, gluten-free flour, except for trying to make bread, um, regular bread. It's just too dense. The flour is dense, and I can't get it to rise. And I've probably done about 10 tries so far and have not figured out a recipe yet for regular bread. Dinner rolls have come out halfway decent, but still not the way I would like it. But the banana bread is a fantastic recipe, and that's why I'm sharing it with you, because... This is so moist and it's it's amazing. I'm not sure why it does so well, but this is this uses all-purpose flour, so you don't add any um, yeast at all. You just uh, it's just this recipe, very simple. So right now I'm I'm going to be uh, combining this all together, stirring it all up, and then uh, we put it in one of these. Uh, uh, I've, I've it's just a glass um, bread pan I guess you would call it uh, Pyrex and it works perfect and then at the end you just got to have a, a metal tray that you can uh, let dump the bread out on and let it uh, cool but it bakes for about an hour and again I'll have everything in the recipe and th so this is real simple so I'm doing this first thing in the morning before I even do breakfast I'm putting this together so that'll be baking while I'm cooking breakfast and hopefully shortly thereafter we'll be having that uh, as a little snack uh, this afternoon, I'm going to do some gluten-free peach cobbler, too. So that'll be another recipe. I'll probably combine the two together. All right, so let's get on with the show. All right, here's what it looks like just before it goes in the oven. And I forgot to talk about uh, some pecans. I mash up some pecans, chop it up, and uh, put that in the mix as well. That makes it a fantastic uh, addition to this recipe.
here's the banana bread just came out of the oven got to let it rest for 10 minutes and then we flip it out onto a cooling rack and uh, usually when I flip it over on the cooling rack I'm already cutting it so I can eat some but that looks fantastic oh my god another perfect uh, bread roll and look at that what it looks like I already took a bite yum 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 now I wanted to show you I got a new tool this is a rigid inflator and I just tried it. I've got these uh, tires on my little Cushman. Um, it's like a meter made truck. And we were just uh, finishing the back brakes. So uh, we had done the front brakes previously and uh, were able to get the back brakes on a nice cold day here in the garage. And believe it or not, these uh, 10 ply tires use 100 PSI. So I did some research and they said it inflated up about uh, 80%. So I'm trying to get 80 PSI. And I was like, dang, I didn't even know that. I didn't know if this thing would work or not, but this goes up to 150 PSI, surprisingly. So let me just show you how this works because uh, I'm impressed this little battery-operated uh, thing can even operate um, up to 150 PSI. This is kind of a neat uh, setup here. So you plug that in like that. There we go. Now it's going to be loud. Sorry about that. So you've got a little digital display. It's at 36 right now. Kind of watch it for a second i notice it does uh, go down some so then i'll come back and do it again i want to make sure i at least have 80 psi so that's pretty good that's holding so anyways i've done three of the tires i got one more to go i just wanted to show you it's kind of a neat little tool and it runs off of these uh I've got some of the larger batteries for rigid octane and uh, that's that's a really valuable little tool I like it so I thought you'd I'd share with you that so yesterday I cut up a whole bunch of uh, call it like lengths of uh, trees they're almost like telephone poles that they brought in here logs and I use this new marking tool that I have and you can see I put white dots at specific distances and I'll show you how I do this at a later date but anyways I was pretty happy with it but you can see I've got these logs all cut at uh, exactly the same length 18 inches and these are all lined up here and back there and what I'm going to do is uh, finish cutting these up and get it all organized and I'm going to have some more delivered to where I've got a couple days worth of splitting and I should have plenty of wood but this is actually a lot of wood here already and what I do is I don't want him bringing me these huge trees because I can't handle the rounds when I cut them this length these are already really heavy and most of them we just roll but I will have to get them up on my splitter table but you can see the diameter of some of these these are about the max I want to handle but the guy will bring me he called me the other day said do you want any more and I said no I haven't cleaned up what you gave me yet but I'm about ready to break out my 
big chainsaw and I'll get some video today of me cutting these things up because uh, I just used my cheap one I had from Home Depot yesterday because I like to run both of them burn out some of the old gas you know and get fresh gas in there so anyways this is uh, another day be out here I only was out here about an hour and did all this so try to get another hour in today it's hard work folks so about uh, a couple hours got all of this uh, logs cut up into bite-sized pieces that I can that I can use in my splitter but a lot of these are actually ready to just go on the log rack I got a bunch of branches that I cut up here and some smaller pieces uh, that I can uh, just go ahead and use as is so I'm gonna go ahead and load them up into my trusty little uh, police vehicle this is a meter made truck that I've been working on got the brakes done and the oil change uh, probably ready for paint now so I'm just uh, this is a fantastic it holds a lot of weight back here too so I use it as my little truck for uh, as I split up I throw it in the back and take it to my log rack or uh, firewood rack so let's get loading up doesn't happen by itself okay here's a pretty good load of the branches that are all cut up and it's kind of cleaned up my little work area for splitting tomorrow I might even do some splitting today. Temperatures are really nice right now. So I'm going to go load these into the uh, wood rack and then I'll come back and set up the log splitter. But this is, uh, it's really nice having a little vehicle like this rather than getting my big old truck uh, dirty. So I like having this. Okay, I've been working on this one for about a month and a half with uh, cutting up some branches and filling this up. So this is a pretty good rack. This is three rows deep. And uh, each one of these rounds actually burn a long time. You don't have to split them or anything. They look fantastic. Down here are some of the bigger ones that I've been splitting. I, again, I found out that uh, when you split these things too small, they just burn more like kindling. So I've been doing some larger splits. And they actually work very well. So this is a 12 foot rack here. This will hold like when I stack it up four feet high. I think it was a cord and three quarters or something, three, three deep. So I've gotten the small stuff out of the way up there. So I've gotten the small stuff out of the way and you can see I also have some um, oak that uh, was uh, done at a sawmill. It was left over from when I built my building down here. So I use that for kindling as well. And those burn a long time as well. So you, you always, I mean, don't waste anything when you got a fireplace or in this case, wood stoves, everything can be used. So that's what I do. So that's actually, that's really nice to have. This one was empty. It's now filled up, ready for next year. And I'm going to work on this one, get it done. And I got one up front and I'm still burning because we're only three quarters of the way through February. So I've still got quite a bit of wood that I'll be using, but I try to keep ahead when it's cool weather, do this hard work. It's a uh, beautiful out right now, about 50 degrees. In fact, I'm going to be down to a t-shirt in a minute. All right, I've been splitting like crazy for a little bit over an hour and uh, been doing some of these smaller ones, but there really weren't any super small ones. And I'm down to like these monster logs, which are pretty dang heavy. You got to be careful. There are some other log splitters that you can get that have a lift gate on them. And I may do that on my next uh, version. But right now, I mean, I have split a bunch of wood. You can see there's virtually nothing left. Everything's all split. Everything was all cut. I'm, I'm about getting wiped out here doing this, so I'm probably going to wait and do some more uh, tomorrow. But anyways, I just wanted to show you for a little bit of time, and this will be ready for next year. And I mean, I got some big hunks. That will burn a long time. A lot of those hunks I put on top of some of the smaller kindling, and that will burn all night long and give you 400 degree heat. It's fantastic. All right, so I'm, I want to show you step by step how to do some of these things. Now, this is a kinetic log splitter, and I've got some videos on my uh, YouTube channel that show you exactly how this works, so I'm not going to repeat it. But I, I did build a heavy duty table next to it using some steel saw horses that are bolted to that plywood, and this allows me to have a place to set aside. I am going to probably upgrade this year to get a super duper same log splitter and uh, same company but they've got a new improved one with a heavier table and it actually can be towed behind your vehicle all that kind of stuff so that's what i'm going to do next thought i'd give you a view of the stack of wood 
first off I cut up all those branches and put them in the wood rack and then this is what I split in probably about another hour it doesn't take long with that kinetic log splitter sun's starting to go down so I have to cut it and it starts getting really cold so I'm gonna cut it off for the day only got about let's see five six seven eight nine rounds left so that'll be for another day all right I gotta go get these stacked in the log rack that's another part of the job you warm yourself multiple ways you warm yourself when you're uh, cutting up the logs into rounds and then you warm yourself picking these up and splitting them and then you uh, warm yourself again stacking them and then you got to unstack them to go uh, put them on the racks by the house and then you warm yourself up picking them up and go put them in the wood stoves so it really an 80 dollars electric bills in the winter time dead of winter so it's a fantastic uh, way to save money you just need a few things like a log splitter and a chainsaw not much else and uh, it beats uh, going to the gym as well i hope everybody's treating you well i hope you're doing well do the best you can god bless All right, go party. We gonna go bye bye? Are we gonna go bye bye? Are we gonna go bye bye? Are we gonna go bye bye? Yeah, all right. You going to get in the car? We're not quite ready. I'm almost ready. You almost ready? Okay. <laughs>